Chris Lovell here with another edition of Pirate Talk. Pleased to be joined by my man Trevor Burkhead, the head coach of the Lubbock Cooper soccer team uh, on the boys' side. I want to make sure we thank, uh, thank everybody at Texas Tech Federal Credit Union for sponsoring these podcasts. Uh, Texas Tech Federal Credit Union is the home of the HERO program. That's a $1,000 closing credit uh, on home loans for educators, military, and first responders. So we certainly thank them for being a part of these, uh, these podcasts. So this is, uh, Coach Burkhead, this is your, everybody call you Burke. Yeah. Is that how it rolls? Okay. So I, I want to make sure that was uh, approved and, and all those things. Cat's the one who does it the most, I think. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Coach Catwinkle. He's, he's good people. Um, so you're 10 for you. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Starting year 10 overall, eight here at Cooper. Okay. Yeah. From Borger? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Two years at Borger. I got that job straight out of college at Wayland, uh, head coach at 22. So that was that was interesting because that team had a bunch of seniors on it. So I was. So you're the head coach. Where now? Tell me where again. At Borger. Yeah, Borger. Okay. Yeah, right next to Amarillo. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You, so you you played at Wayland. Yes. And then uh, head coach at Borger uh, at 22 years old. Did yeah. you? And you didn't know what you didn't know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay. So how? T- take me through your your journey as far as soccer goes as a kid and to now and just kind yeah. of your how this came to be as a player and now into coach and all those things. So it's one of those been playing since four. Okay. Um, my dad always likes to tell the story because he was my coach when I was growing up. Uh, I was a five year old, and at five years old, there's not cards, there's not red cards or yellow cards, but if there was. I would have got the equivalent of a red card when I was five. Uh, we were playing a game, and just some kid pushed me, and I fell to the ground, and my dad's like, you had that look in your eye, and you started running straight for that kid. And he's like, don't do it. And I, I kept running, just straight up tackled the kid at five years old. So that I had a little passion in me, uh, yeah, yeah, at five years old and played uh, all throughout uh, junior high. High school, I went to Lubbock High my sophomore year, which was the first year for um, high school when I was there. Like it was, we, you were still in ninth grade in junior high. Okay. Uh, so I went to Lubbock High, then transferred to Coronado, was there two years, and then went and started the program at Wayland um, and graduated from Wayland and said got the, the job at Borger straight, straight out from Wayland. <laughs> Because it's funny you said, you said started the program and all that, and, and uh, I know Cooper hasn't had soccer for forever. What since fifteen, sixteen, seventeen? Yeah, my there. first years when we started. There you go. Yeah. yeah, and you were kind of this rogue team for mm-hmm. a year, just playing whoever. It wasn't UIL sanctioned yep. until the year after. Because soccer is a funny sport in that there's these hot spots, and it's kind of new in a lot of places, but it's yep. growing in popularity and, yep. and all those things. Um, Take me through the dynamic of just soccer in West Texas as you've seen it kind of grow because, as we said, many people are kind of starting to say, hey, man, we've, let's, let's get soccer going. Right. And, well, yeah. and even, even when I was in high school, and it, it's still kind of the thing, like if you're in club, you got to go to Dallas. Like that's just, that's just how it is. Uh, I think it'll always kind of be that way. But just over the last five years, like we're getting a lot of new club teams in Lubbock um, teams in Odessa and stuff. So we're getting a lot more interest here in, in West Texas, which is, which is great. Um, like I said, I think the Mecca for soccer in Texas is always going to be that Dallas, Fort Worth, Frisco. Frisco yeah. But you can, I mean, we have really good players coming out of West Texas, um, every year, whether it's in Lubbock, Amarillo, Odessa. So it's, I think it's slowly and surely getting more popular every single year in West Texas. Yeah, because they're like, you know, I think of the Metroplex, I think of Kansas City, Missouri, I mm-hmm. think of, or Kansas City, Kansas, whatever. Uh, I think of uh, Denver, Colorado. Yeah. There's these hot spots in the, in the, in oh, the yeah. Midwestern part of the United States as far as soccer goes. Uh, take me, okay, so we're, the weather's starting to get cold. Okay, it's, uh, you know, as we tape this, it's kind of dreary outside right now. And you you even said before we started, it's like, man, this is tournament time. This is tournament season. The colder it starts to get, that means soccer is near. Do you like that, being in the, like a cold? Because it it, it goes against my brain in that. It's like you you would think this would be more like a spring, you know, sport. But no, this is the dead of winter. Coldest time of the year, yeah, let's go play an outdoor sport. <laughs> yes, yep, yes. But I love it. Like, I like the cold personally. I'm one of those people, like, if you're cold, you can always put clothes on. You can yeah. put stuff on. If you're hot, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you can only take off so much. So <laughs> right. I like the cold. Um, you got to have a strong mental capacity to ha- to do stuff in this in this weather as well. So do you? Because uh, when we we had uh, Coach Rogers in here, who coaches on the girls' side, mm-hmm. and she's talking about how she ordered her stuff for the season. They've got these parkas and all these. Do, yep. do you do you roll this way? Oh yes, it's. So for the the soccer term is a stadium jacket. Like there that's you what go. the okay. professionals use. <laughs> and I remember uh, early on here, like I went and bought a stadium jacket. And I think, of course, I think it was Coach Hayes um, was getting on me more than anybody. No. Would, yeah, I'm shocked. When, yeah. when he was here telling me he really liked my parka and all this stuff, and I – with him, you're not going to win in a battle. So. Well, you know, and keep in mind, he wears the he wears the the, the old man in the oh, sea uh, yeah, or, uh, that, that, beanie. That, yeah, that's right, that's <laughs> right. So, yeah, he uh, he who throws the first stone. Right. Um, so, what are your kid? What have your kids been doing since school started to kind of ramp up for the season? How often do you have them per day? When do practices officially start? I mean, all, all okay. those kind of take us through that dynamic. Yeah, like from August to. October, middle of October, it's it's basically an off season. Like we'll lift three times a day, or three times a week. I was sorry. like, man, you are hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Three times a day. Three times a day. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll go three times a week in the weight room. Um, we're usually doing conditioning two or three times uh, a week, and then soccer's kind of on the back burner in August, September. But uh, once we get to middle of October, we're starting to incorporate a lot more um, tactical stuff. Um, our philosophies on the field, and this month we're really starting to go into it because our first after-school practice is the 28th, is that Monday after Thanksgiving break. Okay, yeah. okay, so it's it's right around the yeah, corner. It's, like I said, once the weather starts doing <laughs> you know, this, you know it's it's getting closer and closer. And we're into November now, so yep. it, yeah, get, get ready for some unpredictable weather. You uh, you mentioned that you know soccer wasn't always at Cooper. It's fairly new, uh, and and you have a new stadium that's mm-hmm. I, I guess not technically new, but it's still pretty new. Okay. That how much difference did that make in your program? Just having your own facility with turf and uh, I mean just that kind yeah, of it, lights. It gives us kind of an identity, um, and I think uh, Coach Rogers kind of mentioned it the other day. Like, I, I did the same thing. I posted whenever we had our stadium set. Like, I posted a picture on Twitter, and it, again, it blew up. Like, I was getting coaches from I've never even heard of school saying, yeah, we want to go play all next year. And it's it's a big deal because most soccer teams in Texas play on the football field, which is fine, but uh, you only get about 63 yards width. Because the one thing about soccer, you can have a field – that's 55 yards wide, and then you can have a field that's 75 yards wide. And then same with the the length. It can either be a 100. So those, those two are acceptable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Pampa, their field, I think, is probably 57 yards wide. And then our field is around 75 yards wide. So Big difference. It makes a big difference. Yeah. Uh, and most of the time it, it kind of gives us an advantage because our field is about 8, 10 yards wider than – most a field people play on, so okay. we practice on it every day. We can do different tactical stuff with a, a wider field, spacing and mm-hmm. all those things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Set pieces. I, I love all the terms. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about FC and you know all all the different things. Where did uh, do you do scarves? We started that last year. <laughs> what, like we we had we started getting scarves last year, and because uh, that's like the thing in soccer, yeah. man. The the soccer scarves and all those. And stuff. a lot of them, they'll they'll hold it up, and it'll have different sayings or whatever. And yeah, we we started doing that last year, and we sold out last year. Okay. So the fans, they they're enjoying the scarves. As I well. love it. I love it. That, that's funny. Yeah, because I was I was talking to Coach Rogers about the the, the soccer terms and like. In any other sport, you're just in shape, but it's fitness. Mm-hmm. How's the how's the how's our fitness? Her, her her or his fitness isn't good enough, or it needs to be better, or yeah. our fitness is really good. I just think that's uh, cracks me up. Um, you, you guys won district last year. Yes, yes, we you did. were coach of the year last year. <laughs> yes, yes, the pr- pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, brag brag about you. I mean, was it? it did you, you? You don't set out in a coaching to be like a coach of the year and all those kinds of things. It's just kind of a byproduct, but it, it's right. got to feel good that you had a good year, put it together, and were recognized. Yeah, for it does. Uh, and and last year, to be honest, going into that year. Um, you have your expectations and you have your realistic expectations. And I mean, we always are trying to, to win district, 
But last year going into the season, uh, myself and Coach Gwynn we were a little worried just because the year before we had graduated six starters um, and we had a bunch of young guys coming in to the fold last year. And, I mean, I give a lot of credit to those guys. Like, they, they surprised us um, from August 15th when we started the school year all the way to getting knocked out in that third round, which was the furthest we've ever been. Uh, so it's it was it was a fun year for sure. I think that that means last year for Lubbock Cooper on the boys and girls side, you both went further than you'd ever gone before yes, on yeah. both sides. But that, so it was a great it was a great year for both of us. Definitely, definitely the girls, especially with their team being so young yeah. and them going that deep. That was that was a good year for them as well. And, and I get I get the sense from from talking to both of you, there's kind of this this camaraderie between the, those two, maybe more so than any sport on campus where you work together, you kind of sh- help each other. There's just kind of this, this you know, cohesiveness there. Yeah, I, I could see that for sure. Yeah. And, and it helps with me too because, like I said, I'm starting year eight here and I've been in the girls' soccer period all eight years. So I'm real close with all the girls and um, the girls' coaching staff and we – mesh well together so it, it makes things a lot easier that's all so you already kind of know your team yes okay D- any 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 athletes you're waiting on to get that are in you know well there's one in particular yeah. that, that, I, that we'll, we'll get into in a minute I, as I just uh, asked that question but for the most part are they all soccer only yeah it, the last like I said the last four or five years it's been getting more and more because it's hard. Your season, it spills over into both semesters. It'd be hard to do anything else right. if you're not – yeah, if you're if you're And it's, it's one of those sports. It's such a skill-specific sport where, I mean, it, it, it kind of shows here and there if you're playing it year-round compared to just during the Picking season. Picking up as a hobby, yeah. yeah. And we, we have a couple uh, JV guys, a couple of football freshmen that will come over here pretty soon. But, yeah, the, the one, he's a – Pretty good football player too. Yeah, and and could, and we'll get to him in a second. We're talking about Cub Patton, but uh, I recognize Tegan Van, who did some kicking for the football mm-hmm. team a year ago. I, I recognize Zach Dallas, who's a big, tall yeah. uh, kid who's a senior. Uh, anybody else you want to highlight before that'll be you know that returning? Yeah, we're, that you already we're know? bringing Zach back, who he was uh, um, offensive player of our district. Okay, um, and then Malachi Ramirez was a freshman last year. And he was defensive player okay. of the district, so he'll he'll be back. He uh, he might have a new position for us, a new role for us this year. He might play a little bit more in the midfield. Okay, but he's he's one um, coming back, and then we also have a keeper of the district uh, coming back as well. So man, so we we have some key returners for for this season. Okay. Uh, that and, and let's talk about Cub Patton when he makes that fifty-yard field goal, um, you know, and all that. That that was a lot of fun for everybody. But he's is he as is he as good at soccer as he is at, at football? Yeah, and I and he could probably be the one to answer this, but I think soccer is his first love, his his main main thing. Um, it might be changing with football with all that <laughs> success, which that's fine. Uh, he asked he asked me and Darden about it last year uh, about going kicking and, and soccer and we're like yeah go for it like it it's it makes it better when a kid can compete in a different sport and he's around different guys and different coaches and I think that'll make him even better when he gets to us um, putting pressure on him that maybe you you don't have as much pressure in a soccer game as he does as kicking a 50 plus yarder uh, maybe a PK okay. which <laughs> when we uh, went to the uh, second round last year, he was uh, the only player that scored in regulation time for us. Okay. So he's he can play in those big moments. And it, he was a freshman last year, just a sophomore this year. So he's uh, he's going to be a big player for us as well. That That's awesome, man. Yeah, it's fun to watch these kids kind of grow up and start to do different things yeah. and, and all that. You are uh, – you personally, you're a huge sports fan. Yes. Tell me where the uh, okay. So let me have, see if I have this right. You're a Dolphins fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Vir- Which Virgi- Virginia Tech? Yep. I know it's all over the board. Uh, but uh, Astros? No. I know this will hurt a lot of people, but baseball is that's the one sport I don't really. You don't pay attention. Okay. I don't really I care thought, to. Okay. I mean, I watched I watched the game last night. Okay. Just Cause, yeah. but yeah. yeah, that's the one sport that you don't. Yeah. It's it's lower. I'm an OKC fan for basketball, so that's okay. Kind there you of, go. Okay. That's kind of close to where we the are. The Thunder. 
Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so let's let's take the attack these one at a time. How, <laughs> the Dolphins, how, how did that? That uh, one. That one's a little easier. So uh, my mom was a huge Zach Thomas fan. Oh, okay. And so yeah. growing up, like, and I still root for the Cowboys now, but growing up it was – Cowboys or Dolphins. And he played for both teams. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, just one day, uh, I was like, all right, I'm just going to pick one. And yeah. I wanted it to be a little different because everyone's Cowboys. So I picked the Dolphins, and I've been a Dolphins fan for 20-plus years. And I have not had success being a Dolphins fan for 20-plus years. Uh, Hootie and the Blowfish sings about that very yeah. thing. Yeah, that's they, right. They so. make me cry a lot. So. <laughs> yeah, this year's a little different. They're, they're starting to pick it yeah, up this year. It's been so. pretty, pretty good. Made a big trade recently and, and all those things. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, now take me, through, take me through Virginia Tech. So I think it was 2002. I was playing them on NCAA, which is still one of the best games ever. I'm are glad we, it's coming back. Are we a video gamer, or was that what we, do we? I used to be. Okay. Once I had Ellie, my daughter, she's three now. I don't. I think I've played PlayStation the once in the last two years. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I, I was playing with them on NCAA, and I was like, okay, this team's pretty good. And then I kind of started watching them, and then that, that's basically how it was yeah. from a video game. And again, I'm diehard Hokey fan. Rough, rough times right now. Yeah. We're in a rebuild. <laughs> new, new coach. We're we're gonna start over this. That year. is such a random thing, video <laughs> game, because it's it's a yeah. long ways away. Blacksburg, Virginia is, is hard to get to. Uh, Frank Beamer, is mm-hmm. this somebody you kind of admired to? Helped, helped. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and every coach has their different style. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more, and just my personality, I'm more of a laid back kind of coach. Um, I guess they're calling it players coaches now. Uh, You're ahead of your time because now you almost have to be. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I, I get that. And it's yeah. it's one of those like the boys know and the girls. Like if I'm yelling at you, you you definitely aren't doing something right, and they perk up and they definitely respond to that um, well. But that's how Frank Beamer was. He's just such a likable guy too. Yeah. And where he started to where he finished. I mean, he has a. Basically a defensive style turnover special teams named after him Beamer Ball. So he's one of the of the great college coaches. And I believe you correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the field house over there, there's a lunch pail. Yep. Over there still. I think that that I was think, kind of their mentality. Yep, lunch pail defense. The I think I think Cat brought that in. Yeah. About five years ago, when Which I was, saw that, I was I was loving it because. That's, I think it was I a tip that. of the cap to you, actually, in your Virginia Tech fandom there, uh, from what it. I understand. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. How in the world, How did we – That one, uh, it was more of a – I loved Russell Westbrook, just his style of play. You're, you're the only one these days. Nobody else, nobody else likes Russ. And I, I still like him, even yeah. though he went to L.A. Durant, we won't talk about Durant. That yeah. was a okay. sour leaving, but – but yeah, I just I loved how Russ played, like his energy, um, yeah. and so I just started kind of watching them then, and uh, still supporting now. I wish uh, Chet didn't get hurt this year. Yeah, Holmgren. Yeah. That would have been big, yeah. but yeah, I got to see him up close last year in uh, San Francisco. He's he's yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah, he's long. Mm-hmm. Um, I see, and I I knew I uh, we would hit that off because I just appreciate your love of just sports in general. I mean, you're you're, you're like me. Uh, it just it's just fun to watch competition and sports and fans and kind of oh, yeah. watch all the, all the different things. Interesting that this particular year, here we are in November. I mentioned that. Like, will you get into the World Cup because the World Cup is right around the corner? Yeah. It's going to be at a different time of year for the first time I think ever. Yeah. And around the holidays, it starts right. I think the week before or the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's the it's that week of. I'm pretty sure it's the 20th. Okay. Is the first game. So uh, is this appointment television for you? Oh yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, even usually it's in the summers and it'll be in a European country or south whatever and uh the time difference so there's sometimes in the past i'll wake up at four o'clock just to watch a game um who are you who is who is burke watching then it used I mean, to uh, it I'm used sure. to be belgium like okay. that used to and i'll still kind of root for them and of course usa because they didn't make the world cup last this last first time. time in eight years that's right yeah. they're back so, yeah and they, actually supposed to be it's it's exciting yeah. uh Almost all of our starting 11 is European-based, which I hate to say it, but that's what you have to do in, in soccer. And so we have a lot of – and, again, soccer's on the rise. I think it helps that our international team is good now. Um, 
maybe we can steal some kids at the, that young age where they stick with soccer kind of thing. Yeah. So it's it's exciting. I'm I'm definitely gonna be watching football and soccer during Thanksgiving. I'm, it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, and that's uh, I mean, in Cutter, I think is if I'm saying yep. that correctly. Yeah, um, where it's gonna be 120 degrees in the summer. So that's why it's yeah it's got uh, switched to the winter. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess the Metroplex. Speaking of, will host it the next World Cup in yeah, twenty six. I, I already told my wife like we're <laughs> starting to save up because they're going to be playing in Jerry World, mm-hmm. and even if USA isn't at that game, I'm I'm still going to say I went to a World Cup game. By the way, because there's a reason I'm going to ask this, but you, you knew that Coach Rogers worked for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Did you know? I said I, when she tells me this, it was like my mind was blown and all that. But you know they're going to have to modify. Jerry World, like almost on a permanent basis, to make that field fit. They have to go in and cut some boxes out. Oh yeah, at the field level to make the. the you know, I thought that was because I happen to know a guy that works uh, for the Arlington Sports Commission, and he's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, we gotta, you know. But it was the big enough. Get, it was a big enough deal yeah. to like host it. <laughs> I think every seat will be filled. Oh for, yeah, for World no, Cup. It's no, be pretty incredible to see. Do you do you watch uh, any of the? Team state side like MLS and stuff, or are you more EPL and? I'm more EPL. I follow yeah. FC Dallas. Okay. Um, so again, I got one homegrown, I guess, uh, team that I follow. But FC Dallas is well, the good one for I you. Yeah. Glad, yeah. <laughs> it's not a random. One. Yeah, it's it's hard to figure. I was trying to figure out your fandom. I'm like, what is the correlation? There, we're all over the place here. Uh, in in like EPL, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man U. Chelsea. Okay, Chelsea. Yeah. Okay, so like hardcore. Oh, oh yeah. Like my uh, we have three dogs now and the first one we've had him for about eight years his name is Drogba which is my favorite player of all time played for Chelsea okay the other one is Thunder um (laughs) and then the third one we just got a new puppy uh within the last couple months and my wife named her her name is Luna okay you you finally like acquiesced it's like okay you get to name you get to name the dog finally um okay so uh, putting your schedule together. First of all, are these new? These jerseys? Are yeah, these, Kat, yeah. Cat gave us the go ahead so this year. I'm gonna show you. The, these are the jerseys here. There's the uh, there's the white one right there. So I love the crest. That's we were talking about that. How that's a, uh, you know, and then there's the there's the black one. I thought these were really cool. Sublimated, so it's all oh, yeah. like into the into the deal. I mean, that, that's into the fabric and all that stuff. That's really that's really good stuff right there. I love the. Uh, and Adidas, that's big time that's, soccer stuff. Yeah, yeah as like soon, that's as, soon yeah. as Kat gave us the go ahead, I was like, all right, we're definitely going to go Adidas this year. Yeah, yeah, because that's the one thing about Cooper stuff is now I think you, there's no you're allowed to kind of use whatever yeah, brand use whatever now, brand yeah. you want. Yeah, so Adidas is definitely the oh yeah the the, the soccer king uh, as far as that goes. Um, so putting your schedule together, I, I started looking at this thing first of all. Do you not like playing at home? Like because at the first, uh, I I see these scrimmages, but then I look. The first six actual games are on the road. It it's crazy in uh, high school soccer. It if I was one changes. of your kids, I'd love it because I'd never have to go to school. Yeah, but <laughs> it just it changes but, from year to year. I okay. think uh, I think last year is your last year or the year before we had more home games than we've ever had before. I see. And we and the way we usually set it up for non district and even scrimmages is the. One year we play home, one year we go visit them. Okay. Yeah, and this is all in the span of like uh, right, right at that first week of January. And there's a lot. I mean, you play. G- yeah, we have tournaments the first two weekends of January. Okay. Yeah, but g- yeah, g- basically December the 30th through January the 9th, you're, you're on the road and playing right. a whole bunch of a yeah. whole bunch of. You, you're taking with the Metroplex a lot. And mm-hmm. is, this is on purpose. I mean, Br- Bridget says she kind of does the same thing. You, you do this on purpose because that's where the competition is. Yeah, and it's one of those. We still have some pretty good competition around here. I mean, okay. Amarillo has three really strong teams. Uh, that 6A district with Friendship and Odessa and Midland, they're all strong at soccer. It's its really one of those, like, the tournaments are, are fun for the kids because you're in the hotels, everybody's bringing PlayStation, Xbox, like just some team bonding. And uh, we, we get to play teams we've never played before. I think the, the four games we have in the Joshua tournament, Fort Worth tournament, is four teams we've never played before. Okay. So it's just something different to get to see different looks different style of soccer as well. Yeah, and these are – some of these schools I've never heard of before. These are all fairly new or, yeah. or just part of the yes, uh, the way that, it, that things are growing. Uh, you, you don't like pineapple on pizza, 
So you and I are going to get along great, um, and you're not a candy corn guy either. I was going to say, you're not going to like it when you ask me about the candy corn question. You do, oh, you do like it? It's not like I love it, but I, well, I no, do. No, that's fine. Just I stop do, right there. I just, do like candy no, corn. No, just, <laughs> just stop right there. I, we'll, we'll stop right there. I don't, I don't love it. Yeah. <laughs> we can I, cut I, it out. I, I, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, I, I just wish Chip and uh, Coach Lovern could grasp the fruit doesn't belong on pizza concept. I can't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. anyway, it makes me sad. Give me some jalapenos or some green chilies, like not – yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we are in November, so we'll kind of wrap this thing up and throw some different things at you. It's Thanksgiving time, I'm getting close, okay? Mm-hmm. Halloween is behind us and, and all that, but now we're in November. Favorite Thanksgiving side dish? I mean, the easy one is, like, I can probably eat 20 rolls during Thanksgiving Day because you start at lunch and you just snack the whole day, but yeah. I uh, I like either a green bean casserole or a potato casserole. Okay, yeah, Those I'll, go, I'll go with that. Favorite kind of pie? I like pumpkin. Okay, yeah, so that you kept it traditional. <laughs> yeah. Uh, best gift you've ever given someone? Oh. Yeah. Oh, that one's, that one's tough. Well, so this one is one of those, it's more the thought that counts kind of that, thing. That's okay. Uh, my dad, his favorite band is Huey Lewis and the News, which I love as well. And about, It's funny, their best album, Sports. Sports, yep, Bingo. exactly. Yeah. Uh, it was probably four or five years ago. I gave him tickets. They were playing in, in Oklahoma, and uh, I got two tickets, and we were going to go. And about a month before uh, Huey Lewis, he, he his right. voice yeah. thing, and he hasn't played since then. And he never, we didn't get to go. Oh. So it was one of those, the best gift I ever gave didn't actually Okay, happen. but still, but yeah. I, you're, the intent was there. Yeah, I, I can respect that. Uh, best advice that you could give a younger coach if you if you would if somebody was 22 and it's their first job at Borger High School and they called you up and what you would say what to them uh just be you um and as a young new head coach you might be trying to find yourself like how do I coach philosophies don't ever be afraid to ask for help um I I had my mentor was my high school coach and I'm sure he got annoyed with me, but my first four years of coaching soccer, I would call him probably once a week, like, all right, this is the situation. What do I do? Um, and he passed along a lot of knowledge to me. And I still call him and talk to him now, but it's not necessarily to ask for advice kind of thing. So he definitely helped me out in that. And, again, if, if, if you're a young coach, find some colleagues or friends that can be – a mentor towards you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think too too often coaches are have to, too prideful to ask for help. Right. And and that's the we all need it. I mean, yeah. I, I need it on a daily basis uh, with whatever I'm doing too. And that's like you know, I, I think that's that's a credit to you. Is there a coach out there really in any sport? You mentioned Frank Beamer mm-hmm. that you kind of. Uh, but is there a soccer coach or is there another coach in another sport that you're like, why well, I, I like to pull a lot from them, whether it's mindset whether it's motivational whether it's I mean you know whatever it may be right. that you kind of you know look at from afar and go I want to run my program like this man or lady runs theirs I mean I think Frank Beamer's that that easy okay. that okay. easy one just and he's very um precise with because football you have three different you had offense defense special teams. three sides of the ball as yep. I always say which how is that possible but yeah um, and he just and the thing same thing with his DC back in the day was Bud Foster mm-hmm. who had that lunch pail defense uh, we we started doing something about three years ago uh, hard hat mentality okay. and we even have a hard hat with our, our logo on it and it's it just represents like those type of workers like the construction workers coal miners like they go in at their job every day it's not easy work. And they don't complain. They just go out there, do their best, that blue-collar mentality. Um, so I've kind of taken that from football coaches and kind of tried to incorporate that with, with soccer as well. It's like the pump jack over at Tech Football. Yep. Same, same premise. I like that. Yeah, yes, I mean, we're just, it's just like, man, it keeps that thing keeps mm-hmm. grinding. It doesn't care yep. what the weather is or what, what day, day it is or anything like that. Well, do, do we have a theme with this year's team, like uh, this particular? Yeah, team? so – and this one's very a European thing. It, our motto, credo, whatever this year is, we go again. And it's it can go two different ways. Um, you get beat 3-0 or whatever. You pick yourself up, we go again. We're back at it, we go again. Or you win 3-0, and you can say the same thing, like, all right, this is what we did, we go again, Let, let's keep going, let's keep getting after it. 
Okay, I, I love that. Yeah, like what's next? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, bring, bring it on. Next play, play the next play. Well, this should be fun. I mean, you're doing a great job. So I, I can, I know your kids love you, and and I know uh, Coach Rogers said a lot of things, uh, positive things about you. And it's just fun to, uh, you, you've been so ingrained in this in this school and kind of grown this program into what it is. So it's a lot of fun uh, watching some football. Uh, yeah, coming up here in the colder months. But uh, Coach Burke, appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank there we you. Go. Appreciate there you. There he is. That's Trevor Burkhead. This was another edition of Pirate Talk.